The central idea of inertial measurement is to figure out the pose of some kind of system. And pose is really the six-dimensional position and orientation of an object in three-dimensional space. We can think of it as the x, y, z coordinates that we're used to, in addition to the roll, pitch, and yaw of the systems that, that we're dealing with. It's the three coordinates of the position in three-dimensional space, and it's the three angles of rotation in three-dimensional space. So we get an entire uh, uh, position and orientation tied up in what we call pose, uh, and this helps us represent where our systems are in the world and give us a grounding for the sensors that they're reading and the targets they're trying to hit, and it develops the basis for navigation for the robotics and stuff that we're developing. So the idea here is to figure out how we implement pose sensing. We have a couple of uh, we have a couple of options that we can take advantage of. The first one, most obviously, is let's go with GPS. Uh, GPS is the global positioning system, and it's a satellite-based network that gives us the X, Y, Z, or actually latitude and longitude and altitude coordinates for any object in Earth's atmosphere. Um, this is great if you're outside, but if we're dealing with things indoors, which we do a lot with uh, robotics, then that's not sufficient. We have to rely on some other things. Uh, we can do what's called orientation sensing or inertial frame sensing by sensing things like the acceleration of an object, the uh, gyroscope uh, properties, the rotation of an object, and we can get the um, direction in reference to the magnetic Earth's magnetic field using a magnetometer. So we know where north is, we can basically use a compass. And using these three things, we can try to figure out how the object is positioned in three-dimensional space. All of these things are called inertial me measurement. And the idea behind this is that it's a uh, we're measuring things with reference to the inertial reference frame so it's it's the object itself we're measuring how it moves in space and trying to get an idea of what what its position is based on that rather than having an absolute external reference like we do with gps we are measuring the properties of motion of the object to to derive the uh, position in space the first thing we can do is use what's called a MEMS accelerometer. MEMS stands for Microelectronic Mechanical System, and it's basically a tiny, tiny mechanical system that's etched onto the surface of a wafer, of a, of a silicon wafer. So it's a chip that has a, a mechanism on it. And the way that the accelerometers work is that we have a mass etched onto the board, uh, etched onto the chip, that has a couple of springs etched onto it. And as the frame, as the chip moves, that mass wiggles back and forth, and we read the uh, the wiggle of that mass as the capacitance with some uh, bolted down uh, front, uh, points on, on the chip itself. So we can actually measure how much acceleration it, the chip is undergoing in any axis by looking at, at at either the capacitance or in this case the resistance of these little springs as they get distorted uh, by by the motion of the chip. These things are awesome. Uh, they sense acceleration only, so we have to figure out, we have to do some math to get back to position or even velocity. So they just sense how much the system is accelerating in any direction at any given time. Uh, it, they're awfully cheap because they've been included in cell phones and hard drives and all kinds of stuff. They're very inexpensive to build. Uh, and they, but they only provide a relative measure. So they don't give us an external reference for acceleration. They are only the acceleration in the frame that is actually moving. And we have to figure out uh, how, how everything works from there. Gyroscopes work in a different way. They measure something else entirely. And they measure the twist of a system or the amount of rotation of a system. Uh, and the way they do this is based on uh, angular momentum. So if we have a spinning disk and we try to push it in one direction or another, we're going to have a opposite force. The angular momentum is trying to be conserved and that generates an opposite, uh, a force opposite or 90 degrees opposed to the force that we're exerting on the thing. So if we can set up a system that is either rotating or vibrating, oscillating in some way, then we can measure the opposing force in that direction and uh, measure how much, how much uh, the system is undergoing rotation. 
And MEMS gyros work very similarly to this. So we can, we can actually uh, etch these things onto the chip. And instead of a spinning mass, we have a vibrating mass that wiggles back and forth and that uh, still has an uh, angular momentum conservation. So when we try to twist that, the oscillation wants to stay in this plane and as it's moving as the frame of that oscillation is moving uh, or rotating it's going to wiggle side to side instead so some of that some of that momentum is conserved and we see some some wiggle relative to that and we can sense it in the same way using either resistive uh, springs or uh, capacitive aspects on the chip itself and that gives us an idea of how much the system is rotating MEMS gyroscopes are freaking beautiful. So the way that these are built is we set up these vibrating masses, we vibrate them in the system, in the chip, and we can watch how they vibrate. But we to measure vibration in a bunch of different directions, we have to set up these little like snowflake type structures that allow us to vibrate uh, proof masses in a bunch of different directions at the same time, and we average them and do some processing on them to get an idea of what the total rotation of the system is in three-dimensional axes. So these things are really cool, really, really neat. You should look up uh, 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 a lot of little pictures of these things because they're, they're awesome, and it's amazing what we can do with silicon these days. A magnetometer is the part that uh, you might consider like a, a digital compass. And the idea here is it works off of the Hall effect, uh, which is basically if we are looking at the very precise flow of a small amount of current through some kind of conductor in the presence of a magnetic field, it's going to pull a little bit of that uh, current to one side or another because as the current moves, as the electrons are moving, they're generating a magnetic field and they are affected by the presence of other magnetic fields. What we can do then is measure the difference, the voltage difference between one side of that conductor and the other side of the conductor uh, on the opposite direction of uh, the flow of current and see that there's an imbalance there and that gives us a sense of the amount of magnetic field that's present for that conductor. And again, this is something we can etch onto the surface of a chip and it allows us to sense the direction and magnitude of magnetic fields, which basically is all we need to measure um, uh, where north is, is, is we can figure out the direction of these things. 